when there's a new release, everyone's always keen to find out what's going to be released when. This video is going to look at the Wave 1 releases for NATO forces. That's going to highlight the products in the release wave. However, we're also going to have a quick overview of the forces they belong to. Stick with me. Wave 1 for NATO forces is due out in early October. Obviously, this will include the NATO forces source book, a 160-page hardback full-colour book. I've already released an overview video for this, but just to recap, NATO forces covers Canadian, French, Dutch and Anzac forces for Team Yankee. It also introduces Belgium as a playable nation. The book is the usual mix of timeline narrative, formation diagrams, unit stats, painting guides and catalogue entries for each nation. There's also some playable scenarios. NATO Forces updates the old free nations lists, bringing them up to the expanded timeline for Team Yankee, the 1990s. Nations in this book get newer gear like Leopard 2 tanks, M1A1s and introduces Leclerc tanks for the French. There are new formations and many existing units are tweaked and expanded. It even introduces improved ATGMs for all the Western nations, even ones not covered in this book. But that's just a start for NATO forces. This wave also features new unit card packs for Anzac and Dutch forces. These include all the units for these forces, including the new and updated units. Plus the card pack for Belgium is due at the same time. This is their first time in Team Yankee officially, expanding the roster of nations in the game. Most of Belgium's forces are fielded using existing kits, like Leopard 1s, Dutch AIF VAPCs and French Mirage jets and so on. But a new one for them is the Belgian Infantry Platoon, TBE 702. This blister is due out in the first wave. The blister contains 41 figures, enough to field 7 FNFAL Rifle MG teams, a Rifle Command team, a 60mm mortar team, a Blindicide or Apalas anti-tank team, and 3 Milan missile teams. These figures are designed to be used with the Belgian Mechanised Infantry Company. They can be mounted in either AIFVB or M113 armoured personnel carriers. More on that later. Dutch forces also get a new blister in this wave, a 120mm mortar platoon. This contains three heavy mortars and their crews, plus three medium bases to mount them on. These mortars are an alternative to the M106 mortar tracks and can be towed by their own armoured transports. The transports aren't included in the blister. Lots of NATO forces use M113s for transport, as well as mortar carriers, AT missile mounts and other weapons carriers. There's a new NATO box set of these due out, TNBX03, the NATO M113 transports box set. You might think, so what? More M113s. But I have a theory. Battlefront are always combating what they call skew creep, having lots of similar box sets of plastic kits with just some minor add-on differences. M113 is a prime example of this. There are separate boxes for US, West German, Israeli, Canadian and others. Heck, there's even two box sets for Australian forces. Plus Nordic forces like Norway have the NM135 kit, still built on the M113 base sprue. I'm guessing Battlefront is looking to simplify this. Ideally, they'd have a single box set with the plastic kits and then sell upgrade sets to allow you to modify them for different nations. In support of my wild theory is TAU241, the Australian M113 upgrade pack. This cool, direct-only product is part of this wave and is designed to modify the plastic M113 base kit for Australian forces. It contains six T-50 turrets, six M113 accessory sprues, two Red Eye and two RBS-70 missile launcher crew figures. 
it doesn't contain the M113 plastic kit parts. You need to buy those separately. It states it's intended for use with the German Panzermorsa box set, but I don't see why this upgrade kit wouldn't work for any M113 box you had available. This upgrade kit eliminates the need for the separate Australian M113 T50 box set. I would expect to see more upgrade kits like this in future, designed to slim down the M113 platoon box range. Along the same lines is TNAS-001, another direct-only product with 10 FN mag machine guns. I'm guessing this is for modifying existing tank and APC kits to replace M2 or MG3 machine guns as required. Again, this product avoids having to have separate platoon boxes of an existing plastic kit just to include the alternative machine guns. The last thing in this first NATO forces wave is TNA-951, the NATO forces decal set. This is a set of four decal sheets with markings for NATO forces vehicles. I see sheets here for France, Canada and Australia. This includes red kangaroos for Aussie vehicles and aircraft markings for New Zealand Skyhawks. You are going to end up with decals you don't need from this pack, but maybe you can trade and swap them. And that rounds out the first release wave for NATO forces. It covers all you need to feel Anzac and Dutch forces for Team Yankee, as well as Belgium. New products are the unit cards, the NATO decals, the Belgian infantry and the Dutch mortars. While technically new, the M113 box, FN mag blister and the Australian M113 upgrade pack are essentially repacks of existing items. People hoping for Canadian Grizzlies or the French starter set will have to wait a bit more. While that might be a bit disappointing, this wave does upgrade three whole NATO nations, including adding a whole new nation to the roster. Wave 2 with the Canadians is due out later in October, and Wave 3 with France is due out early November. The second half of this video is going to be a quick look at the lists for this release. Let's start with Belgium. They're a new force for the game. This is the force diagram in the book. The Belgian 16th Panzer Division list gives you up to three companies of Leopard 1 tanks, three companies of mechanised infantry and APCs, and a single reconnaissance squadron. Support choices include M109 155mm SP howitzers, plus an armoured OP, Gepard AA, and air support with the Mirage 5. Allied support can be either West German or British. I'm guessing this is either or. You can't take elements from both. You need to pick one and take all your Allied support from there. The West Germans get you some missile AA, rocket artillery and helicopter support, while the British bring tanks, mechanised infantry and helicopters. As with other lists, you can take a single black box from one of your own national formations as a formation support choice. Plus you can have one NATO formation as an allied formation. Tanks are Leopard 1, so they're lightly armoured. There's no heavier tank option for the Belgians unless it comes to an ally. The Belgian Leopards were upgraded to Leopard 1 BE standard in the late 1980s. This added spaced armour, fire control, side skirts and other improvements to bring the tanks up to the equivalent of the German Leopard 1A5. The tank squadron can take up to four tank platoons of three tanks, but you can swap out one of the tank platoons for some infantry. The squadron has organic Gepard AA and Scimitar Recce options as well. It's a well-rounded little force. Belgian infantry companies have a HQ and up to three mechanised infantry platoons. One of the infantry platoons can be swapped out for a tank platoon. Infantry are mounted in either the AIFVB or M113 APCs. The AIFVB is a private venture modification of the M113 design, which added firing ports and a one-man turret. Dutch forces operate the YPR-765, a very similar vehicle. The AIFVB platoons are armed with a 25mm KBA gun in the turret and has the Milan mount special rule to fire passenger-fired Milan missiles. 
This can include the upgraded Milan II for some extra punch. The M113 platoon can swap their APCs for 50 cal armed AIFVs for no cost. Organic support options are Scimitar Recce, M106 SP Mortar Tracks, and a choice of either a Milan anti tank platoon or Cannon and Jagdpanzer platoon. The Jagdpanzer is a West German produced 90mm gun armed tank hunter. This is not as effective as Milan, but is a cool miniatures option. You can take either three or four of these. Our last formation option is the Recce Squadron. This has a HQ and up to three Scimitar or Scorpion troops. The real hidden gem here is the attached options for a Spartan Assault Infantry Troop and the Striker Guided Weapons Troop. This can give you a whole formation for just 25 points that has 22 vehicles, four infantry stands, and access to an AT-3 missile. Sounds like a bargain to me. So that's Belgium. With light armour and limited AT, playing Belgium will be like playing one of the new Nordic Forces nations. It will require some skill. You'll be manoeuvring your tanks for side shots, or taking allies to get higher AT. Next up are the Anzacs, Australian and New Zealand troops in Europe. I've spoken about these a bit in the NATO Forces book video. On the surface, Anzacs still have Leopard AS-1 tank companies, up to two of them. There are three mechanised companies, a New Zealand Scorpion Armoured Squadron, and an M113 Cavalry Squadron. The new formation here is the LAV Trials Squadron. Australia trialled and later adopted the LAV in this role, and they get one here in NATO Forces. The rationale is the squadron was formed to replace losses in action. As you can see, you can field a one or two vehicle HQ, as well as up to three troops of three or four LAVs. You can also add tanks, either Leopard AS-1s or M1A1 Abrams. Abrams are also included as loss replacements for the Aussies. The heavy tanks are nice, and you can take a single troop of these with most Anzac formations but at over 50 points for four tanks, they're likely to start in reserve. That's a big chunk of points for just four vehicles. A nice option, but a bit of a gamble. Other organic options for the LAV troop are the M125 Mortar Platoon, Milan Anti-Tank Section, and the M113 Cavalry Assault Troop. The Assault Troop is a new unit. Infantry available in larger numbers and equipped with extra Carl Gustav teams. The standard M113 cavalry squadrons share the same organisation as the LAVs, but the cavalry troops have additional mixes of LRVs and MRVs available. These allow you to field historical versions of this force that weren't possible in free nations. Back at the Anzac Force diagram, support options are anti tank Land Rovers or gun buggies and an M113 SAM section. The SAM section gets the option of Bofors RBS-70AA missiles if you want to upgrade from the ageing Red Eye. The Australians would be attached to British units, and that's where their support choices come from. These include tanks, tube and rocket artillery, additional SAMs, helicopters and aircraft. Air support still features the excellent Harrier, but has been expanded with the A4 Skyhawk as an alternative. While the Harriers are more likely to turn up with the jump jet rule, Skyhawks can fire guns, bombs, rockets, and even an optional AT-27 Maverick missile. Anzac units benefit from upgrades like Milan too if you want to pay for the extra performance. This is just a very quick overview of the Anzac forces but I field them, and I think there's some very exciting options here. There's welcome tweaks to existing units, as well as brand new gear. I'd love to field some Australian crewed Abrams, but over 50 points on a single platoon is a gamble. If they break and run, you're done. OK, let's go Dutch. Here's the national formation diagram for the Dutch 4th Division. Netherlands forces already had Leopard 2s in Free Nations, but they extend that with Leopard 2A5s. You can take up to three companies of Leopard 2A5, Leopard 2 or Leopard 1 tanks. 
There's also three mechanised infantry companies and a recce squadron. Those are your formation options. In support, there's SPAA, as well as both tube and rocket artillery, plus an OP to go with them. The Dutch also get access to Apache attack helicopters, up to two flights. Alternatively, you can take West German helicopters as allied support. German support also gives you Roland AA, more rocket artillery and tornado strike aircraft. These are all solid options, and some fun units and unusual vehicles. It will be a fun force to build and paint. Leopard 2A5 is the top of the tree for Western tanks. An AT-22 gun, 22 front armour, and all the fruit when it comes to optics and fire control. But this all comes at a cost. I'm not allowed to show points here, but I can tell you a platoon of four Leopard 2A5s is well north of 60 points. Possibly that's why the second compulsory platoon in this formation can be swapped out for mechanised infantry. Otherwise you couldn't field even a minimum tank company in a 100 or 110 point game. I hadn't realised how much fun the Dutch recce squadron might be to build. The company formation is a HQ and two recce platoons of M113 C and Vs, paired with a compulsory Leopard tank platoon. Your tank choices are Leopard 1 or 2, plus you get the option to add up to two more tank platoons. I'd want to add some infantry, which is an option. This is an intriguing little formation. If I was fielding Dutch, I'd choose this. The last thing I'll mention before we wrap this up is the Apaches. These give the Dutch some AT-25 Hellfire missiles to put on the table. Helicopters are a gamble, and Warsaw Pact nations usually have plenty of gun and missile AA, but Apaches are a nice option to have available. But again, the points are up there. This is just a brief overview, but the Dutch might suit you if you want NATO heavy hitters. They have all the best toys. Plus that recce squadron list just looks like a fun formation to play. So that's all the releases for Wave 1 of NATO forces, plus a very quick overview of the three nations covered in this wave. I hope you found it useful. Thanks again to Battlefront for selecting Fog of War as a content partner for this release, and for supplying the PDF of the rulebook for us to take a look at. What are you excited for in this wave? Do you have one of these nations already, or are you looking to start one? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.